Well, Susan, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yes. Boy. Okay. Sorry about the technical difficulties. <laughs> Good morning. How is everyone? Just fine. Just fine. So Susan, thanks for joining uh, okay. us today okay. and for hosting this. Sure. Um, Cool. Just just a, a quick um, 10 seconds. Uh, uh, I asked Susan to, to jump on and talk about the ERC or employee uh, credit program that is available. And she's helped my company at Lindemann Lawn Care and Landscaping uh, obtain that credit, which was a very substantial amount of money. And um, people that I've talked to about this program and have mentioned this program uh, there, there's quite frankly, there's really a lot of uh, naysayers out there, I feel, about the program, and they don't know um, how valuable it is or if they're even qualified. So I asked Susan to jump on uh, and do a webinar with us to um, to explain a little bit more about uh, the ERC. And uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Susan to um, give us a presentation and answer any questions that uh, that you all may have. So Susan, thanks for joining us and I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Awesome, thank you so much, Adam. Appreciate you inviting me and, and hopefully we can help everybody. Quite a few of you on here this morning. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and share information with you and then I'll open it up for questions. Um, I'll just have you hold your questions till, you know, kind of the end, just because maybe I'll answer them. Okay. So the employee retention credit, what is it? Well, it came out of the CARES Act in March of 2020. The CARES Act included the PPP loans, the EIDL loans, and then the ERC. Some call it the employee retention tax credit. We call it the employee retention credit, but it's all the same. So here's a bit of a timeline for the tax credit. So in March, March 27th of 2020, business owners could take PPP or ERC, but they couldn't take both, okay? Then, as you all know, everybody knew about PPP, the banks were incentivized to get that money into business owners' hands. Banks made billions of dollars, so everybody knew about the PPP money, right? Um, well, this program was established and not enough people were taking advantage of it. It was underutilized. So originally the tax credit was $5,000 for a company per employee for the whole year of 2020. Then because it was underutilized, they expanded that money. So in 2021, they expanded it to 7,000 per employee per quarter uh, for 2021. So a lot more money, still not enough distributions. It was still very underutilized because at the time people, if they took PPP, they couldn't get ERC. So they changed legislation again. Businesses that took out PPP could now also qualify for ERC. Um, within that legislation change, it was originally you had to have a 50% reduction in your gross revenue over 2019 quarters, looking at 2020 quarters. Again, um, still underutilized and legislation was expanded to in 2021, it could be a 20% revenue reduction. Then it expanded even further to not only a revenue reduction, you didn't have to have a revenue reduction. It could be supply chain or uh, disruption to business operations. And we'll get into that. So now the program really since the end of 21, it include, it, it's up to 26,000 per employee. Now, again, it depends on wages, PPP. There's a lot of factors, but it's a lot of money. Okay, so who qualifies? Businesses that show a decreased revenue. So we talked about that 50% in 2020 over 2019 or 20% um, in 21 over 19. Businesses with a partial or complete shutdown. So, you know, you 
assuming you you all are in the lawn service business, um, you probably weren't shut down being outside, um, but everybody's different. So that may not have impacted you, but it may um, to services offered. Um, the other, the last piece of it, supply chain. So if you had difficulty getting supplies that were needed, um, rock, soil, plants, uh, shrubbery, that sort of, um, those supplies shrubbery. as well as shrubbery, <laughs> um, as well as trucks or, you know, your uh, equipment that you use, if you couldn't get them fixed or parts that you had to, you know, so that's part of your operation. So, um, lawn services, I mean, if any of those impacted you at all during COVID, during 2020 quarters or 2021 quarters, and I'll go over those quarters as well, um, then you can, you can qualify. Okay. So how much is our, how much your business is getting? Again, up to 26,000. We're averaging about 17,000 per employee. Um, our average business, and actually I would say this is higher, but our average business gets about 225,000. Again, depends on number of employees, wages paid, uh, payroll taxes, uh, health insurance. So there's a lot of factors. It's over 200 pages of IRS legislation. So here's a couple examples, well, four examples. A retail shop in a mall, it was a chocolate store. Uh, she had nine employees, actually had sold the business, but still was able to qualify because still owned her EIN number, 68,000. A restaurant in Utah that has five locations, 63 employees, 1.2 million. A catering company with 15 employees, 262,500. And then a trucking company with 180 employees, 3.1 million. Million. So it's all over again, depending on number of employees and the other factors. So that, I mean, that is the employee retention credit in a nutshell. Um, if it, the quarters that are covered are, are part of the program are Q2 through Q4 of 2020, and then Q quarters one, two, and three of 2021. Currently, quarter four is not a part of the program. Um, we're hearing talks that they may add it. And if they do, then any business that we've helped, you know, we can go back and amend quarter four returns. And even if they take it into 2022, because uh, many businesses were still very much impacted in 2022. So that's, that's the program in a nutshell. So I can open it up for questions. Susan, one thing that I think it's important for um, those who apply for this um, know is that if your taxes are already filed for the for 2020, 2021, 2022, whenever this would take place, there's going to have to be a amendment to the taxes if they receive the money. Is that correct? Well, so I am not a CPA, but what I will tell you is yes, the business tax return. So partner, let me give you a little bit of background about myself. I'm in financial services. We, our core business for the last 13 years has been helping teachers. So we educate the educators all over the country on their pensions, retirement planning. Well, once COVID hit, we couldn't get into the schools. So um, we expanded into the small business sector, hence ERC. Um, with that said, um, so the the um, the employee retention credit is our partner. So we have we have partnered with the forensic tax forensic tax experts that they're the ones that are going to do the complete analysis and then file 941 X's on your behalf. So your payroll taxes will be amended during this process, applying for the employee retention credit. Your business tax returns, 
Those are the ones that are going to have to be amended by your CPA or accountant. And there's, I've heard it both sides, whether the, the CPA is going to file, amend, um, or add this money in, let's say to 2023 when you get it, or if they'll go back and put it, amend 2020 or 2021. It just depends on the individual CPA. Again, this has been over 200, there's over 200 pages of legislation. So it's happening a couple ways. So yes, it's taxable. It's not dollar for dollar taxable. You're still gonna come out way ahead. Yeah, so thank you for, for bringing that up. Somebody asked if you can put the who and how qualifies uh, page back up on the screen. Sure. Yeah, so basically, so Forbes came out with an article um, last year saying about 70% of businesses will qualify for this program. Now, we're seeing it higher, but it just depends. Um, if you were, there, there was a business that comes to mind, he had ordered for some reason, he had ordered all these extra supplies. And so, and he had just bought all these trucks or something and he didn't have any supply chain disruption because he already had everything. And then he didn't have any issues with trucks and his revenue was up. So he didn't qualify, but that's it. I mean, that is unusual. Most businesses don't I mean, in some regard, he was lucky because he had, for some reason, you know, pre-ordered all of his materials, but, in the, and then on the flip side, maybe not because he's not qualifying for this program and it's a lot of money. So, um, yeah, so it's revenue reduction, but that's not the only reason that you need to qualify. Um, complete or partial shutdowns, and these are government ordered, but we're talking about um, reduction in capacity. So if anybody has a showroom, couldn't have customers come in without an appointment, they had to do the six feet apart, kind of depending on where you're located, government orders, um, disruption in um services. So if your services were limited because of supply chain, so if you could do, um, you couldn't do seating or, you know, you couldn't do landscaping, but maybe you could do the rocks or, you know, the stone, or you couldn't do the sprinkler system. If you do that, you know, just different, any disruption to your operation, that's what we're going to talk the way the way this qualification works is you're going to meet me on zoom or my husband we work together you're going to meet one of us on zoom we're going to go through the questionnaire together i'll send you some prep work before so the gross revenue numbers have you gather your 941s your detailed payroll reports and then and you'll get all this in an email with the, all the instructions and then the PPP information, that's all you need. And then we go through the questionnaire together. So we're going to dig deep to help you because it's been almost three years now and it's hard to remember. It's, it's been a hard, you know, situation on everyone, but especially business owners, you know, remembering everything that impacted your business. So we're going to go through that questionnaire with you and, and really ask detailed questions because we have a lot of experience with a lot of different businesses and, um, you know, help you kind of remember. Is, is a question for you is, sure. is supply chain, um, issues or delivery issues of trucks. Isn't that subjective? Well, so Yes and no. So some of this program is subjective. So on the supply chain question, and this is straight from the IRS, were you able to find a reasonable replacement 
supplier. So what you think is reasonable and what I think is reasonable could be two different things. But let's look at it from a revenue standpoint. If you did, let's say, 100,000 in revenue in 2019 and a quarter, 10% of that would be $10,000 was your business impacted at least $10,000 worth in supply chain disruptions. So your revenue doesn't have to be down for supply chain, but they're looking for a nominal, so 10% impact to your business over the prior year. So, um, you know, here's the thing with supply chain, like you mentioned trucks, we all know car dealers, we have a lot of car dealerships that we've helped, we all know they couldn't get cars, they couldn't get parts, so that was an issue, and that comes from the plants that came from the ports of materials and parts sitting on ports in California and, you know, wherever, um, so Again, it, it, it's individualized that we'll go through the questionnaire, but the supply chain is like a domino effect. So if you couldn't get a truck or a part, it came from your supplier who may have been shut down or maybe they were deemed essential, but then their supplier and then again, could have been stuck at a port somewhere. Does that answer your question? Um, it does. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's still... Yeah. Is it is it our burden to prove it that there was a supply so, chain? Yeah. Well, so yeah. Well, yeah. Go ahead. So we we lease our trucks, uh -huh. and we a situation where we had to start ordering our trucks twelve to sixteen months in advance. So is yes. that a supply chain disruption? Yes. Absolutely. So 12 to 16 months without those trucks and you needed those, that was a business disruption. Yes or no? Did that disrupt your business operations? Well, they, they would look back at, at the revenue and say no, because our revenue- But it's not-, not Right, right. And, and many businesses did not have a revenue reduction because you, the business owners, pivoted. You figured out other ways to make it happen. Now, everyone was home and they were looking around their homes. So construction, electricians, plumbers, landscapers, siding, roofing, all of those businesses, service businesses, have all higher revenues because everyone was home looking around their house saying, well, I guess we'll get this done now because we're stuck at home. Right. And so your revenue was up. So the supply chain impact is 100% separate from the revenue. They're not looking at it, doesn't have to be a revenue reduction. So, what you would prove, and this is Chris talking. Yeah. Was that Chris that asked yes, the question? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you would put this in a folder, you know. So what I would recommend for everybody, and then we do this as we go through the questionnaire, any supply chain disruptions that you had, just put it in a file. If the IRS comes back three years from now and wants you to prove that it took 12 to 18 months to get those trucks, then you'll have it. And we and think just, that sorry, they're going one, to- One last question. I, I, I don't know. So one- yeah, so all we course. need to, to, to prove it, is if we have one supply chain disruption, like I just mentioned, Correct. that's good enough to qualify. Did that? Yes, absolutely. And now we're going to look at every quarter individually. So we're going to look at quarter two of 2020. We're going to look at quarter three and we're going to look at quarter four and then one, two and three of 21. So were all six of those quarters impacted by your truck delay? Uh, probably not all six, but some of them. I, okay. I, I would look at it. Yeah. So in that case, then if it was two quarters, then you'd qualify for two quarters for that supply. 
So okay. then I'm going to dig further. I'm going to ask you more questions. Well, did you have, you know, trouble getting rock or, you know, <clears throat> other supplies? So because, so yeah, go ahead. So I'm, I'm sorry, but basically what I hear you saying is that if we had disruption in quarter three of 2020 and quarter one and quarter two in 2021, then we would qualify for those three quarters. And then and Correct. then you you would come up with, not come up with, you would ask other questions to dig a little deeper to I'm see gonna, if we qualify yeah. for the other quarters. Absolutely, because this money is on the table for you as a business owner. And we don't, I mean, we want to stay within the IRS guidelines. We don't want to fudge anything, but we're going to help you just kind of jog your memory. And if it doesn't, it doesn't you know, but um, we're going to definitely keep asking questions until we know for sure that there are no other quarters that you can qualify for. You know, I, I, Susan, I know that we were having issues with getting certain stone, certain materials in stock uh, because they couldn't get the materials to the manufacturers. So that was, you know, delaying on, on some of ours. Um, there, there was an, I don't remember exactly, but there was a few things that, that delayed it as well as um, the shutdown in Illinois too. There was, there was definitely some guidelines that they wanted to shut right. down and things like that also. So um, a combination of all that right. us to be able to qualify. Thank you, Susan. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're welcome. Every state, city, county ordinance there, the, it was all different all over the country. So, you know, everybody, I'm assuming everyone on here is from different parts of the country. So um, everyone is gonna have different circumstances with government shutdowns. Do we have a few more questions for Susan before we wrap up? So what I can do in here is, I can put my email in here and would that be helpful? And if you um, want to set up, um, you know, to go through the questionnaire, let me see here, that's hold. Okay, if you wanna set up a meeting to go through the questionnaire, uh, you can email me with your phone number, um, your obviously, cost. Yeah, sorry, I didn't cover that. So the way this works is there's no obligation whatsoever to go through the questionnaire to submit your documents. Then our forensic experts go through all the documents line by line to maximize this credit for you within the IRS guidelines. And at that point, once we come, they come back to us with the exact, because we're going to get an estimate when we go through the questionnaire. Um, but when, when our team comes back with the exact number, at that point, you can choose to pay later and it's 15% of the credit on the back end. So when you get your money from the IRS, you can pay 15% of that credit or if you want a 33% savings, you can pay 10% up front at that point of filing. And, and that's all it is. If for some reason you don't get the money, you'll get your money back. If that credit, you know, is wrong, which we have filed 40,000 businesses to date and over 7 billion in credits, none of them have been wrong. If there's any questions about anything, you know, that we get with the IRS and address it um, with the numbers. If, let me address this too. If you have not paid your payroll taxes for any quarters, or if you were short or something, if the IRS determines that, they will take what you owe them out and then send you a check for the difference. Say that again. I can't hear you, but I was going to pull up something else. Um, somebody asked a question, but I didn't. Mark, can you unmute yourself? Did you have a question?
Any other questions? I was just going to pull up real quick and show you guys here. Let me share my screen again. Just a quick example in qualifying. Okay, let's just put in, Chris, how many W-2 employees on average did you have in 2020? Just an estimate. Uh, 48. 48. And then what about in 2021? Uh, roughly the same. Okay. All right. So your estimate is approximately $746,000. And that is just based on numbers. So then again, they're gonna go through your detailed payroll report, uh, line by line, and your 941, as well as medical, you know, what you pay if you pay medical. If anybody has, uh, and I'm, I'm not gonna say this correctly, but I have a, a client that has, three locations in his landscaping business, one in St. Louis, one in Louisville, and one in Indy. And he has green card visa employees. I forget what that's called, but, um, you know, and some part-time. And so anyway, that they all count. All of it counts. Part-time, full-time, it will all count. So Chris, what could you do with $700,000 for your business? Uh, a few things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you don't have to use this money for your business. You could also, you know, uh, buy a boat. I, I mean, they're not telling you what you have to use this for. This is for a reward for keeping your employees on the payroll. But you do not have to use it for anything. You do not have to pay it back. The, these are payroll tax credits in the form of a check to you, the business owner. Just like the PPP, yes, that yeah. have to be used directly for the business. Well, the PPP, you had to use it for payroll. There were certain rules oh. in order for it to be forgiven. Here, there are no rules. Yeah. So I'd love to help you. You know, all of you go through this and you know see how much money we can get for you. Yeah, thank thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Susan. Yep. You're All so right. welcome. Just reach out if you have any questions or want to move forward. Thanks, Susan. Okay. You're so right. welcome. Take care. Bye, everybody.